Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm joined today by with a special guest, my colleague Wayne Thorpe. Uh, Wayne, good to see you. Good to be seen, Charles. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, I understand uh, that you're the uh, victor of a small bet between uh, you and uh, Derek Hageman on a uh, sporting event, shall we say? Uh, yes, uh, my my beloved. University of Michigan Wolverines uh, in the first game of the Big Ten season uh, uh, thoroughly thumped the uh, Minnesota Golden Gophers. So yes, uh, Derek and I had a, a small wager on that. We still have to uh, figure out what the what the ultimate payment is, but uh, at least I was able to relish that. And then Michigan went and laid the egg the following week against that team from East Lansing. Well, I think perhaps next week, Derek uh, should be required to uh, be dressed in full Michigan colors. Uh, much better than that, uh, the auburn and gold or whatever color that they may have. So, yes, nothing nothing beats the maize and blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, today Wayne's going to talk about our A-plus investing service and some of the great enhancements we made. So I don't want to take anything away. So, Wayne, it's, it's all yours. And I'll be sitting well, back you, monitoring questions. Well, thank you, Charles, and uh, thank you for uh, for actually standing in for Derek this evening and serving as tonight's moderator. And uh, thank you also to Ryan, our our man behind the scenes, uh, sort of uh, pulling the strings. Uh, these uh, this is definitely a group effort, so I appreciate both of your efforts this evening. Uh, and welcome everyone to uh, tonight's episode of AAII's Webinar Wednesday. Uh, my name is Wayne Thorpe. I'm the senior financial analyst at AII, and I want to thank all of you for joining me this evening. Uh, luckily. You know, there's not much going on in the world, nothing too exciting to uh, to divert your attention. So uh, you can sit back and relax this evening and hopefully you'll learn a few things. Uh, tonight, I will be talking about some of the new and exciting features of A-plus Investor that we've recently rolled out as part of our ongoing efforts to provide a powerful and intuitive service for AI members. Uh, my plan this evening is to speak for about 30 to 40 minutes uh, and then open things up to questions from you, uh, our attendees. Uh, so please feel free to submit questions through the GoToWebinar control panel, and Charles will be monitoring this uh, questions feed, uh, and then uh, be uh, submitting them to me uh, at the end of my end of my talk. So nearly two years ago, I started working on a project to help build a singular service for AI members that combined elements of financial planning, stock, mutual, and ETF discovery selection and analysis, as well as portfolio tracking asset and asset allocation analysis. The result of that work was A Plus Investor, which we launched at the beginning of this year. And we've been very pleased with the response year to date. Uh, and all, actually, we have over 5,500 subscribers uh, currently to A Plus Investor. But for those of you that are watching this evening that may be relatively new to A Plus, uh, let me just spend a few minutes giving an overview of what you get with A-plus investor. So when we set out to build A-plus investor a couple of years ago, our goal was to create and design a service that answers many of the questions, common questions that we get from our members. And this includes, how can I select, analyze, and sell investments following a sound objective framework? How do I build, track, and manage a diversified portfolio that fits my own needs? as well as how can I identify investment strategies that fit my time horizon and my risk tolerances? Well, to that end, A Plus Investor is a multifaceted online investment discovery, analysis, tracking, and planning service, offering not only portfolio tracking and analysis, but also stock, mutual fund, and ETF discovery and analysis. Since we launched A Plus in January, A Plus Investor in January, we've been receiving a steady stream of user feedback and comments regarding the functionality and the usability of the service. And I personally, as project manager for A Plus Investor, I spent a lot of time reviewing these comments and then prioritizing them so we can use them to make meaningful changes, changes and enhancements to benefit subscribers. After I collected all that information and do a lot of uh, specification design, wireframing, things like that. I then work with the talented team of programmers that we have here at the association, and together we bring these enhancements to fruition. Two of the recent changes and enhancements that have been garnering a lot, great deal of a positive feedback with A Plus Investor 
are improvements to the a stock grade screener, as well as revisions to the a quality grade calculation methodology. And these two areas are going to be the focus of my conversation with you tonight. Since we launched a Investor, one of the most popular elements have been the a stock grades. And these are five grades based on common investing factors that have been found to identify stocks that outperform the overall market for long periods of time. And these factors are value, momentum, growth, earnings estimate revisions, and quality. Unlike standard factors such as value and momentum, however, quality lacks a commonly accepted definition. Overall though, the typical quality factor is a collection of metrics designed to capture the indicators of higher quality financials in companies. So after we launched, our, launched A Plus Investor with our first set of factor grade calculations, we started revisiting them and just to make sure that the underlying calculation and methodologies make sense, especially based on sound academic research and real world results. And this evaluation ultimately led us to reformulate the methodology used for the quality grade. And in doing so, I firmly believe we've actually generated a much more useful grade, especially from an investment standpoint. So the new A plus quality grade methodology uses the following variables. Return on assets, which is a measure of management's efficiency using companies' assets to generate income. Return on investment cap, invested capital, which is a measure of how well a company is using all of its sources of capital to generate income. Gross profits to assets, which measures how well a company's assets are generating profits. Buyback yield, which measures the percentage of shares outstanding a company has repurchased over the last year. Change in total liabilities to assets, which is a measure of how a company's liabilities have increased over the last year, scaled to its total assets. <coughs> Pardon me. Accruals to total assets, which is indication of the difference between the net income and cash from operations, which is also a measure that's been shown to indicate how aggressive a company is in its accounting. The Z double prime bankruptcy risk score, which as the name suggests, measures the likelihood that a company may face insolvency. And then lastly, the F score, which is a measure of a company's overall financial strength. So you have these eight variables and in the calculation then, it calculates a percentile rank for each of these eight variables. And then it takes an average of those overall eight percentile ranks for the eight variables that underlie the new quality grade. And then ultimately, based on that average, it is then re-ranked to come up with a final percentile ranking of that average. And that overall percentile ranking of the average, of average score is what is used to assign the overall quality grade. Now, obviously, to make sure that the new fields have a meaningful impact on the performance of the quality grade, we did perform some back testing of the stock universe over 21 years based on the quintile rankings of the new quality score. And this is what you're seeing here on the chart on slide number nine. And as we would hope and expect, the higher the grade, the better the performance. And you saw that at every single stage of the F to A grades. So between the period of the start of 1998 through the end of 2019, those companies that had an F score, uh, I'm sorry, uh, an F grade based on the quality grade had an average annualized return of 6.9%. And then when you go to a D, to a C, to a B, to an A, that performance increased. Whereas when you reached the A grades, <clears throat> the, cumul the, the average annualized return for the companies with an A grade over the back testing period was 14.2%. So the performance F versus A was more than double that. So again, we, uh, those are the type of results that you like to see. Now it's also worth pointing out that quality is also used uh, some, from time to time as an exclusionary screen. So you might not necessarily see that there's not maybe not a big performance difference between choosing a stock that has an A grade or B grade, 
but perhaps more important as an exclusionary screen to avoid those companies that have low quality grades. And then as in doing so, you're avoiding stocks that could have a negative impact on the overall performance of your portfolio. Pardon me, need a beverage. <clears throat> so the grades tab of the stock evaluator page has the quality grade breakdown for each stock in the A plus stock universe. Here we have the stock evaluator page for Tractor Supply Company, which is actually a recent addition to the stock superstars report portfolio. And so you can see here that uh, Tractor Supply has a quality score of 94, and that's through the end of last week, which is very strong. So we can see here that it has an A grade based on its quality grade. And then we have the individual metrics that go into the overall quality grade. So again, the return on assets, return on invested capital, gross to income to assets, et cetera, et cetera. So then you have three sets of data related to each of these eight variables. You have the score, which is the actual percentile rank for tractor supply for each of these eight metrics. So for example, the trailing 12 month return on assets for tractor supply ranked in the 93rd percentile amongst all US traded stocks. You then have the, a uh, column that is the ticker symbol, which is the actually raw score, the raw value for these individual metrics for that company. So again, returning to return on assets, tractor supply had a trailing 12 month ROA of 12.2%. And that's what ranks in the 93rd percentile of all US stocks. And then lastly, you have the sector median. And so this is for the uh, retailers other, I believe is the industry that tractor supply is in. For the typical company in that industry, I'm sorry, that sector has actually has a negative return on assets over the trailing 12 months. So you can see not only the individual components uh, of the quality grade, the percentile ranks, the values for the company, as well as the respective sector medians. <clears throat> so that concludes then the discussion of the revised quality grade. And now I'm going to pivot and talk about another set of enhancements that we've recently rolled out for A plus investor. And that pertains to the A plus stock grade screener. Now with the stock grades, as I just showed you, uh, not only can you analyze the individual grades of a particular stock in the portfolio, in the uh, stock universe, and you can use that using the search function at the top of the AI website, but you can also use the A plus stock grade screener to isolate stocks that are exhibiting specific factor grades or grade ranges. Now, when we first rolled out A plus investor back in January with the stock grade screener, you used to only be able to apply the factor grade filters to the entire universe of roughly 6,100 stocks. But over the last couple of weeks, we've rolled out enhancements that allow you to run stock grades that, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Not only can you apply stock grades against the entire universe of stocks, but you now have the ability to run uh, these stock grade filters against a portfolio that you've created using the My Portfolio tool, companies that are passing one of AAII's 60 or so stock screen idea screens, or you can run these stock grade screens against the constituents of an individual sector or industry. So I think it's perhaps a little more beneficial, and uh, I always get a little hesitant, a little scary, scared when I do this, but I'm actually going to go live now uh, and provides you, uh, show you navigating uh, the AI website and help you, uh, show you how you can go about using these stock rates. So bear with me for just a moment. I'm going to exit out of PowerPoint. Uh, hopefully everyone can still see my screen and you should hopefully be seeing the A plus stock grades screener at AAII.com. And so actually how you go about accessing this area is you have the navigation bar uh, at the top of the website. If you go to the screening section and under stock screenings, you have the stock grade screener. 
and that will then actually load up. There we go. So now here you can see the A plus stock rate screener. And just to give you a, a bit of an overview of the stock rate screener, so you have the five different factor grades that encompass the overall A plus stock grades, value, growth, momentum, revisions, and quality. You also then have the sliders, which is this is how you go about uh, isolating either a, a specific grade for one of these five factor grades or a range uh, of, of grades. So what I'm going to do is actually just show you is uh, I'm actually, I'm a value investor, uh, very much firmly believe in value investing, but I'm also a little impatient. And so I like to uh, merge both value and momentum uh, oftentimes to my investing uh, methodology. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to find all of those stocks that have a value grade uh, of just A. And I just wanna point out too, that we're running these screens right now <clears throat> against the entire universe of stocks, which at this point, uh, as of yesterday's close actually, was a little over 6,100 companies. So since I want to be isolating those companies that only have a value grade of A, I'm gonna move my slider from right to left, and you get the little hand, and these, these little balls that tell you where the range is right now. So it's what I call it wide open at the moment, where we're including companies that have A, B, C, D, F, as well as null values for the value. So I'm gonna take this little slider ball on the right side, and I'm gonna move it over where it's on the A. So by moving and isolating only those companies that have a value grade of A, we've gone from 6,121 companies, I do believe, down to 248. So almost immediately, we've, we've significantly reduced the number of companies uh, that uh, we could be analyzing here. So beyond that, uh, I'm also then, again, sort of a value on the move. So I also wanna find those companies that have a momentum score uh, of A. So like I did with value, I'm gonna slide the slider ball from the right to left, move that over to A. And so from 6,121 companies, only 25 companies now in the stock universe have both a value grade and a momentum grade of A. And then just to round things out, I just wanna make sure that all of the remaining companies have at least average grades or better for growth, earnings, revisions, and quality. So again, moving the ball with the respective grades from right to left, I've just slid it over to C. So you can see, unlike with value, where it's only the ball is on A, that shows that we're only isolating those companies that have a value grade of A. At growth, we have a ball that the left side is at A and the right side is at C. So that tells us then where we're isolating companies with a growth score of A, B, or C. So we've went from 6,100 companies down to 24. And as you move these sliders around, immediately below, you have a table that has all of the companies that are passing your grade screen. So these are the 24 companies that passed uh, my value on the move, uh, if you wanna call it such, uh, filter. And let's say I wanna find out all those companies now that have the highest momentum. So then I use the ranking buttons, ranking toggle buttons on the momentum side of things. And so as of yesterday's close, uh, Blue Links Holdings has a momentum score of 95, a value score of 16, with 16 being more uh, attractive on a valuation standpoint, uh, a growth score of 64, an estimate revision score of 42, and a quality score of 93. So this is how you can use the uh, stock grade screener to run screens against the overall stock universe. Uh, but I wanna show you some of the enhancements that we've made recently that allows you to be more granular uh, and more specific in the universe of stocks that you're actually uh, applying these screens to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reset my stock universe. My 
my internet connection is a little slow because I'm streaming and trying to do this live. So one of the drawbacks of doing a, a live, but I think this is more beneficial to the end user. So I've reset my stock universe. I'm back at my 6,121 companies. So now I want to do is I want to load a the results of an AAII stock idea screen. So I click on the load screens button. And this brings up the 60 or so stock idea screens that AAI tracks. Uh, you're probably very familiar with these. If you've been a member for any period of time, you know that we update these uh, either on a monthly basis or a daily basis if you're an A plus subscriber or a Stock Investor Pro subscriber. So I'm actually a huge fan of John Neff. So I'm gonna come down, scroll down the list to the John Neff screen and select that. And so as of the close on November 3rd, 15 companies were passing the AAII John Neff screen. Uh, it's a deep value screen that also looks for companies that are exhibiting uh, sufficient levels of fundamental growth. Uh, it's one of my more favorite screens. So already uh, we've gone from 6,100 companies down to just the 15 companies that were passing the Neff screen uh, as of yesterday's close. So now what I want to do is, even though uh, the NEF screen is a quote unquote value screen, it only uses a singular uh, valuation metric, and that's the dividend adjusted peg ratio. I wanna be a little more uh, refined with my valuation metric, and I'm going to specify to make sure that the, a, the valuation grade, the A plus value grade, is at least a B or better uh, for this universe of companies. So I'm going to slide my slider over to B. So I have ranging from A to B. So now we've gone from 15 to 10 companies out of that original set of NEF passing companies that have a value grade uh, of A or B. I also want to make sure that these are all high quality companies. So I also am going to very make sure that the quality grade is at least B or better. So that keeps us uh, at 10 of the original 15. <clears throat> and then again, like I did previously, I just wanna make sure that the remaining companies are exhibiting at least average levels of growth, momentum, and estimate revisions. And so we went from 15 companies that were passing the NEF screen as of yesterday's close down to six. And I'm actually gonna rank these in ascending order by value. Again, lower is better from a valuation standpoint. And uh, let's see, we have Apogee Enterprises, uh, Sprouts Farmers Market, Triton International, uh, Pulte Group, Select Medical Holdings Corp, and Elementian Kushtard Inc. Probably just slaughtered that company name, and I do apologize to it. But now you have the ability, uh, I've demonstrated that you can take any of AI stock idea screens and further manipulate those results based on any of the five uh, factor grades. So uh, again, this is a, I think a very interesting and powerful tool where you already have stocks that are passing a given stock screen that are exhibiting uh, a minimum level of fundamental characteristics uh, tied to whatever set of screening criteria that the individual screen is using. But then you can also use these five factor grades uh, to further narrow down your search. So now the next step I want to do is again, want to reset my universe of stocks. But now another element that you can now do screening, element of screening you can do with the stock grade screening is you can run these stock grade screens against a portfolio that you've created using the My Portfolio tool. So in order to load a given portfolio of stocks, and that's the key, is it has to have a portfolio that has to have at least one uh, stock in the portfolio because these are stock grades. So I wanna load, my portf load a portfolio. So I click the load portfolio. And I'm gonna select, uh, let's see, the A plus challenge portfolio. This was actually a portfolio that uh, was based on the most popular holdings amongst uh, AII members uh, that uh, some analysis we did a few weeks ago. So these were the 21 companies that were the most popularly held amongst AI members in their portfolios. 
pretty diverse collection of companies. Um, but let's say this was a portfolio that I had set up, that these are 21 stocks that I already own. Uh, another way uh, that you might want to use the stock grade screener is to identify those stocks that might have uh, relatively low stock grades that might then warrant some additional evaluation to decide whether or not uh, you want to continue to hold them. So whereas before I was looking to have, you know, minimum levels uh, of, of value, growth, momentum, estimate revisions, and quality, now I want to see are there any stocks in this portfolio that have low values uh, that might warrant, uh, again, some consideration of whether we want to hold them. So let's start. Uh, so I'm going to start out by actually um, looking for only those stocks that have grades of C or lower um, in this out of this group of 21. So if I'm going to now moving my slider from the far left to the right to set up a lower threshold. And I'm going to start by setting that ceiling at C for all of the different quality grades. Well, luckily, uh, as of yesterday's close, none of the stocks in the portfolio actually had uh, a rating uh, of C or better across the board. So that's a good thing. So let's see. So only five companies had um, grades of B or lower amongst that. And I guess actually this is something I want to go back. I actually should have talked about this a little bit earlier is to show you that when you first, whether it's the entire universe of companies, uh, these companies that are passing a given stock screen uh, or stocks that are in a loaded portfolio, you can see when you first load that what the distribution is. So we can see that the value has a bit of a bell curve to it. Uh, growth most definitely does, as does momentum. Uh, estimate revisions slightly skewered towards A and B grades. Uh, and then by and large, these companies are very high quality companies. Uh, so that's uh, very good to see. But let's say, you know, I am a, let's see, let's look at those companies that have some low quality. And these are AbbVie, Bank of America, uh, and JP Morgan. Uh, so let's see who's got the D. So JP Morgan Chase uh, has a D grade. Uh, of D at the moment. Uh, now, just because a stock has uh, a low grade for either across the board or for an individual factor grade, doesn't necessarily mean you should be getting rid of it, uh, but it is definitely potentially uh, highlighting some stocks that could warrant some additional analysis to see whether or not these are stocks that you want to continue holding. So we now have walked you through uh, how you can run a screen against the entire stock universe as well as against uh, the results of an AI stock idea screen, as well as a portfolio. So the last thing I wanna do is now show you that you can now uh, select an individual sector or an individual industry <coughs> and perform the same type of grade screening that we have done uh, previously. So I'm going to go to the sector drop down and I'm going to let's select healthcare. So as of yesterday's close, uh, there are 1148 companies in the healthcare sector uh, using the Refinitiv business classifications industry and sector designations. So we have a, a very large number of healthcare companies uh, in the sector that I've uh, chosen. So let's go through and let's uh, you know let's do some additional uh, manipulation here. So let's let's do let's do my value on the move criteria here again. Also want to be looking for. So I want to be having uh, above average or actually strong or very strong value, momentum, and earnings quality. So we've gone from 1,100 and some companies in the healthcare sector already down to 20, just with these three uh, filters here. Uh, and then let's go back and apply average or better levels of growth and estimate revisions. So we've gone from over 1,100 companies uh, in the healthcare sector down to only 10. And so that's the beauty. That's what I really love about stock screening 
is you can start with, you know, in, in some cases, several thousand stocks. Uh, and, you know, with a few clicks of a button, you can literally narrow down the number of companies uh, that you want to perform some additional analysis on. So now we have uh, 10 companies. And let's see, I want to find those that are exhibiting high levels of growth. So DLH Holdings uh, has a value score of 32. Again, lower the better. Growth grade of 79. A momentum score of 87, a estimate revision score of 41, and a quality score uh, of 67. So you can load a particular sector and do some additional screening against it. And then lastly, if you want to take it one step further and get a little more granular as far as the company focus or uh, the operational focus of a given company, is we can then choose an individual industry uh, to perform some additional screens against. So let's see here. So you've got, we've got about 130 industries to choose from. So it's a pretty, pretty diverse collection. Uh, online services. Curious to see what these companies are. So there's 151 companies that are in the online services uh, industry desi designation of online services based on uh, TRBC class classifications. So let's see. I'm interested in finding those that are exhibiting some strong growth and strong estimate revisions. Just getting rid of the super expensive companies far as valuation and then let's set minimum. Actually, I'm gonna average momentum or better, but I wanna have high quality companies as well. So that's still leaving us quite a few. Oops. That's really interesting to me. Well, let's get really So we have six out of the uh, couple hundred, I believe it was, uh, that uh, we had in the online services industry. And those that have, you know, kicking out the insanely expensive companies and then having the highest level of quality revisions, momentum and growth, it takes us down to six companies. Uh, so really surprised that there's still that many. Um, and then let's look at, Let's rate these on quality. So we have iRobot Corporation. Uh, I miss my I miss my iRobot. Uh, definitely makes my life made my life easier in my old condo. Um, so that's a company that uh, many of us have probably heard of, uh, Logitech International. Uh, my Logitech mouse that I'm currently using. Uh, then we have uh, Integris, Turtle Beach Corp, Century Communities, as well as PJT Partners. Um, so that really, you know, in a, in a nutshell, that uh, is, encompasses uh, the primary enhancements uh, that we've done. Uh, again, uh, we've revised the quality grade, um, and based on the back testing that we've done, I think there were meaningful changes, uh, definitely showing that, uh, you know, higher quality companies outperform lower quality companies. Um, but I think, you know, me personally, uh, in a, a a tool that a function that I'm using quite a bit in my day-to-day -day analysis here at the association is the ability to load either a portfolio, uh, the results of a stock screen, or focus on a individual sector or industry and be able to perform uh, these different stock grade screens. Uh, so these are two, I think, uh, enhancements that I'm very pleased with that, uh, again, they've been garnering uh, a, a good amount of uh, positive attention, but a uh, we'll, couple more things I want to talk about. So I'm going to, of course, it did that. So let's. So as I said at the beginning, uh, that uh, you know, one of the things I do on a regular basis, uh, one of the things the association actually does on a regular basis, is to send out surveys uh, to our members, both discussing. AA membership, 
as well as if they're subscribers to any of our premium products. Um, and so periodically we send out these surveys. And so if you ever receive any of these surveys, you know, if you haven't, I know that we're all very pressed for time and we respect that. Uh, these surveys literally take about two minutes to complete. And those couple of minutes that you take out of your busy schedule, we very much appreciate it. And those really you are performing an invaluable service to the association. Because uh, that actually on a monthly basis, I sit down with the analysts at the association as well as our marketing department and our member services departments. And we as a group review these surveys and we identify uh, ultimately those areas that we can be doing better at. Uh, and that helps us plan future improvements. So any feedback that you give either, you know, uh, in the results of a survey, uh, I get emails all the time. Uh, I mean, I oversee, as, as, as head of the, uh, the RNA department, I sort of oversee all of our premium products, but then I'm uh, directly involved as far as the project manager of A-plus investor, project manager for Sock Investor Pro, as well as the lead analyst and editor uh, of SSR, uh, you know, I'm responsible for those products, but then all of, as, as the overall group, uh, I'm constantly wanting to make sure that we're providing the absolute best products that we have. So your feedback, uh, you know, your feedback truly, oops, your feedback does matter. Uh, and so, you know, the time that you take uh, to fill out those surveys uh, truly does us a uh, tremendous service. And to that end, you know, again, we launched A Plus Investor at the beginning of January, and we have just received a flood of feedback. Uh, you know, we take the good with the bad. You know, ideally, constructive criticism is is the most valuable to us and the most welcomed. Um, but you know, there's also we have members out there that are brutally honest, uh, and I do appreciate that candor and honesty as well. Uh, but based on all that feedback that we've been collecting now since January. Uh, these are some of uh, future initiatives that we plan on tackling uh, in the coming quarters. Um, get to this comment quite a bit is we definitely could be do a, improving the workflow when you're creating portfolios uh, or editing them using my portfolio. Uh, we also have gotten many, 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 many requests to be able to directly import uh, brokerage account information, transaction data, uh, directly from a broker into my portfolio. So that is something I actually am going to be working with our tech team over the next uh, month or two to look into the feasibility of offering that functionality. Uh, User-defined portfolio analysis. So right now with uh, my portfolio, you can only perform your diversification analysis and whatnot on your favorited uh, portfolio. But we're going to do some uh, analysis as far as the number of portfolios that our members have uh, how many, uh, the average number of portfolios that each member has, uh, things like that. And they will help us decide whether or not uh, it makes sense to improve that functionality where members can isolate or choose, you know, the individual portfolios that they want to include in that overall uh, analysis. Also in the process of, you know, doing some research as far as what are some common variables for uh, growth and based on that, uh, doing some testing, we may be deploying a revised A-plus stock uh, growth grade in the coming future. Uh, you know, it seems relatively innocuous, but we have the fundamental stock screening module. Uh, this is actually, <clears throat> for those of you that have used or are using Stock Investor Pro, uh, this will actually serve as the first step into a completely redesigned from the ground up online version of Stock Investor Pro. But uh, right currently, we don't have a really robust fundamental screening uh, module of A plus or an online version for Stock Investor Pro subscribers. So this will be something that I think will be a. It's going to take several quarters, but I think you know the end product, even beyond that first initial step, is hopefully going to be a tremendous improvement over where we're currently at with Stock Investor Pro. And then lastly, a potential for a price alert or a stock grade, upgrade, downgrade email, uh, very similar to the weekly portfolio insights email that we're currently doing. Uh, so give users up, um, probably daily alerts as far as potential significant price movements, as well as upgrades and downgrades across the five different uh, A-plus stock grades. So that concludes uh, my time as far as my discussion uh, this evening.
Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm going to have Charles uh, rejoin the conversation. Uh, hopefully, we've been receiving some some questions. And uh, so, Charles, uh, I'm ready to uh, take some questions. Sure. Great presentation, Wayne. Uh, we got several questions. I've actually categorized them. Um, well, I'm going to start off with one that actually, before we go everything you talked about, uh, I've actually had two different people ask me about how they can screen ETFs and mutual funds. Um, there are ETF and mutual fund screening modules uh, in uh, A Plus Investor. Um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go into it too in depth, but uh, if you come to AI.com and if you go to screening, you have an ETF screener and a mutual fund screener at your disposal. And so this might take a little bit with the bandwidth to the streaming. But yes, you have uh, the ability to filter these ETF and mutual fund universes that we track with A Plus Investor uh, along a whole variety of uh, category, data categories. Um, so I would suggest maybe if you're relatively new to A Plus Investor, uh, we have both in the user guide and in the getting started guide uh, information on how you can go about using uh, these ETF and mutual fund screeners. So yes, you do have ETF and mutual fund screening uh, at your disposal with A Plus Investor. And you also, I'll just add, you have access to all of the first cuts for the mutual funds and ETFs we've created. So uh, go back to the quality grade now. Um, mm -hmm. Daniel asked if, he, if there's any concerns or should he be concerned about any overlap between the F score and the other criteria used in the quality grade? The only overlap actually within the uh, the F score is uh, return on assets. Uh, return on assets is one of the uh, nine criteria of the F score. Otherwise, they are independent of the other variables that we're using. So uh, I don't feel that uh, there should be any concern uh, as far as overlap uh, amongst the F score and the other variables that we're using. Um, William wanted to know or wanted to confirm that all eight measures of the quality grade are equally weighted uh, in calculating it. Uh, yes, uh, they, did, they are equally weighted. And actually, this is a variable calculation. Uh, in order to have a valid uh, quality grade, a stock has to have uh, valid measures for at least four of the eight uh, underlying metrics. So let's say, you know, ABC Corp only has valid measures for four of the eight, then that overall uh, stock grade is derived from the average of those four variables that are valid, and then you create a rank based on that average score of the four of the eight. Um, and then uh, James wanted to know how he can use a quality score to identify stocks with strong balance sheets. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, uh, a company that has a high quality grade uh, is going to have a, a strong balance sheet. Um, you know, there's might not there's not as many uh, balance sheet related elements to it. Uh, you know, you've got change. Let's see. Let's go back. Let's do this. So the quality grade. So, <clears throat> I mean, you do have change in total liabilities to assets. So this is basically, I, uh, you know, a company is going to get dinged uh, if they've been taking, if their total liabilities have been increasing uh, rapidly relative to their level of assets. Um, you know, the Z double prime bankruptcy risk definitely is, you know, companies that have poor balance sheets are typically going to be the ones that are going to be, uh, have a greater risk of insolvency. So there's definitely some elements to the quality grade that should be able to help you identify companies that have uh, quality balance sheets. But overall, the, 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 the intent of any type of quality grade is to identify companies that have strong financials. And I'll just point out, when you look at the quality grade, when you see return on assets and gross, and gross income to assets, 
It also identifies companies that don't have bloated balance sheets. So you might see a high level of assets, but they're seeing a lot of cash, maybe a lot of intangible assets. So you might see some of their balance sheet numbers look good, but they're not generating income or earnings off of those assets. So, you know, strong balance sheet, but if they can't earn money off of it, then the strength may not be as good in terms of driving the stock price higher. Um, Absolutely, and uh, both strong, strong balance sheets as well as uh, you know efficient balance sheets. Absolutely. Uh, Eva wanted to know how often the grades are adjusted. Uh, Eva, that's a great question, and actually that was on my notes. Uh, actually, uh, on a daily basis, we rerun all of, uh, we update uh, our database, uh, and all of these variables are rerun. So these variables are always updated uh, every trading day. Uh, overnight with data through the previous days uh, and close. So these are updated uh, five days a week, the, uh, the day after any trading day. Great, I'll bring it on to the screener. I have one other question actually. Um, and that was, someone was asking whether or not, um, yeah, uh, Douglas, Douglas asked recently um, whether or not we'd consider having an intrinsic value calculation as part of the grade. The problem, I mean, there's definitely, there, there are many different elements that can go into that. Um, you know, intrinsic value is, in my personal opinion, is there's often, there's there's a lot of art, it's probably more art than there is science related to that. And, you know, you can get some very basic intrinsic value calculations, uh, but then, you know, in any valuation that I actually use, I use some actually pretty rudimentary. Uh, valuation models um, and inevitably I get you know people sort of give me a little bit of a side eye as far as you know they think these are overly simplistic so then people start thinking well it has to be more and more complicated in, in order to be of any value but then it started to become garbage in garbage out so you know there's definitely you know all at the end of the day uh, a, a PE a PE ratio uh, is is kind of an intrinsic value calculator, you know, if you believe in reversion to the mean. So you can be comparing a historical PE, uh, a trailing PE to its, you know, five-year average or something like that. So there's some relatively simple valuation measures that you can be doing on your own. Um, so, but again, the question becomes, you know, how much data do you want to be uh, throwing into that? And really how much value is there to, a, to an intrinsic value? Because, you know, very rarely does the stock price uh, in intrinsic value uh, actually intersect. Great, thanks Wayne. Uh, regarding the screener, several questions about that. Um, what Gary asked how we actually select the 6,000 companies that go into the screener. Where, where does that universe come from? Uh, that is the universe of actively traded uh, US listed companies that have current financials. So first and foremost, uh, our data feed gives us access to US listed companies uh, or ADRs, so non-American companies designated as ADRs that trade on US exchanges. So that is our overall universe with probably about 10 or 11,000 companies. But then to make it meaningful from an investment standpoint, we then make sure that a company has traded, I think within the last, maybe 90 days, as well as has updated uh, SEC filings uh, within the last six months. So then that uh, kicks out a number of companies that uh, aren't quote unquote active. And that's what takes us to our universe of roughly 6,100 companies. Great, and then I had a couple of people asking about if it's po basically asking if it's possible to see grades on a specific stock. Absolutely, uh, so here you have, um, the AI website, we might be at the stock rate screener right now, but at the very top, you have this search quotes in sight box. So let's do company with my initials. And then so when that takes then, when you do a ticker search within the website, that takes you to the stock evaluator page for, for a particular stock. And you have these different sub tabs of that, including the grades tab. So if you click that, then that will allow you to drill through not only the overall 
gives you a high level view of these grades, but then you can dig further in and it breaks down the individual metrics for each of these factor grades and you can get the values uh, for the individual company for those individual metrics. And so Bert, going back to the screen, Bert wanted to know with the NEF screen, he saw the grades on the stocks and he wanted to know if you actually limited the screen to certain grades or those are grades of the, just that reflect the stocks passing the screen. Uh, that's, well, let's go back there really quick. Could you repeat that? just want to make sure I understand the question. Yeah, so he, his question was, how did you decide which grades to use for, for the NEF screen? Uh, but I guess the bigger question is, did you actually specify grades to use when running the quant screener on the NEF screen? Oh, okay. Actually, those those were my own. Uh, that was based on my own uh, particular uh, likes when it comes to to screening. Uh, so <laughs> let's go back. So yeah, there was uh, that was that was purely that was purely Wayne uh, filtering uh, there. There was no necessarily rhyme and reason. Uh, again, um, the the NEF screen. If you're familiar with NEF, it is a a sort of a value on the move uh, type screen, definitely a, a value oriented, contrarian oriented, but then also looking for companies that have, you know, strong, but not, but, uh, you know, reasonable fundamental growth. So we have 15 companies that meet those initial NEF criteria, uh, but then, you know, I wanna make sure that these are truly value oriented companies. So, <clears throat> That's where I made sure that it has to have a value score. <coughs> Pardon me, man. Very dry here today. Um, so minimum uh, a value of at least A or B. Uh, and then again, being a kind of an impatient investor, uh, I wanted to see you know if there's any of these stocks that have are showing at least some average amount uh, of price momentum. And so that's that was just my own uh, personal likes coming through with the, uh, the filters that I use actually for all of the examples there. Uh, that was were just uh, my own personal likes. Great. Um, Larry wants to know whether or not the screener considers dividends. Uh, it does not consider dividends, um, but uh, fancy you should say that because um, we actually are in the process of launching this coming Friday, uh, a dividend grader that will become part of a, the AAII dividend investing portfolio. Um, Derek Hageman, the lead analyst for the DI portfolio, uh, has been working uh, very diligently over these last few months uh, to develop uh, a dividend uh, grader for dividend paying stocks. And that will be uh, a, a add-on tool now to the uh, AAII dividend investing service. But uh, the grades here for A plus uh, do not take dividends uh, into consideration. Great. Um, and now Ray asked a really good question. Probably a lot of people have. So you use a quant screener. You find a list of stocks you're interested in. How do you choose? What's what's the next step in terms of deciding which stock to actually invest in? Uh, I mean, that becomes down to a that becomes a, a relatively subjective uh, element as well. You know, I, I have my uh, out of the 15 companies that were passing the NEF screen, uh, applying my A or B value, um, and let's do this, let's, yeah, or uh, C levels of growth, and let's just do uh, as well as B levels of quality. So I've gone from 15 companies down to seven. Um, first and foremost, uh, these seven companies should never be viewed uh, as a buy list. Uh, these are a prospecting tool. So you can view stock screening as I've gone from 6,100 companies down to seven. So I can spend a, a better amount of time analyzing these individual seven companies. To look at this group of companies here, even with the grades themselves, pardon me, uh, I don't think that there's any, you know, I can have a pretty good idea so I can use this again to decide if this one I want to do additional analysis and Pulte group. But at the end of the day, beyond that, it's very much a, a, a subjective process. You know, for example, you know, I'm a deep value investor. So I would probably maybe sort my this group in ascending order by value. 
So, you know, Apogee, Sprout, Triton International would probably rise to the top just because they have uh, some of the more attractive uh, value. But then, you know, you start looking, you know, Anthem, still relatively attractive from a valuation standpoint. But analysts apparently aren't all that keen going on with Anthem because their estimate revisions grade is relatively low. So you can at least use this framework to identify stocks that are, are attractive uh, from a from an investigative standpoint. Um, but everybody's different. So, you know, to say that, you know, Apogee Enterprises is going to be good for one person versus another because of their uh, risk tolerances, time horizon, everything like that, that decision ultimately boils down to the individual. Great. Now, I am going to have a few questions regarding the, uh, and I'll speak slowly in case you need a drink. Um, and the questions about the grade. Um, you know, one of the questions, obviously, and this comes down to what academics, academics like to use book to price, whereas us individual investors like to use price to book. But the question is, um, one of the questions is why is lower better for value and why is higher better for momentum? And will we ever consider having the scores all line up so all highs good or you know all lows good so two part question uh, i mean obviously obviously it's it's understanding the, the the calculation involved um you know i guess it's and it's a matter of semantics and you know it could be cuz i'm i'm closer to it and maybe the those of us that were working on the project are close to it but I, I find that there is some symmetry to when I'm looking for a low value company and that I am more attracted to low value than in my mind, a low value score would be attractive. Um, you know, obviously that means we have to convey that methodology uh, to the end user, uh, but that is where it uh, comes into play. Uh, you know, to be, to be honest, you know, that I haven't gotten many comments or questions from people that have found that uh, confusing, but I can understand why potentially, because we are then, if you're looking at scores, better scores, higher the score, a better score. Uh, so, I mean, that's something we might uh, want to look into, but at this point in time, it's not anything that I, I believe is generating uh, widespread confusion, but uh, I, I totally understand uh, and appreciate uh, the comment. So that was the first part Charles, with, there was probably, I think, another part that I did not uh, get to or, or, or answer. Yeah, so I, I think you did answer, because the question was, you know, why are all the scores, you know, the same? Oh, just, I guess, yeah, I got you, okay. Right. And the other question, obviously, is why is it lo low good for value and why is high good for momentum? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's, I mean, if you're, if you're a value investor, the lower the score, that means it has a, a lower, you know, quote, unquote, more attractive valuation. Whereas for everything else, you know, high growth, if you're a growth investor, higher technically is better. The same with, uh, you know, momentum, high momentum, uh, you know, high estimate revision. So analysts are making significant changes uh, to the underlying uh, consensus estimates, as well as then higher the quality score, the higher quote unquote quality uh, of, the, of a company. <clears throat> okay. Um, Axton, we got one question here about where, uh, the uh, members can actually find, uh, I guess, guides for using A plus, and are there PDF versions of those guides? Um, so, if you come to the website, you have the yellow A plus investor tab here. We have a user guide, and to answer the second part of the question, these are not in PDF form. Um, you also then have a getting started guide. And then each week I put out an email called making the grade that uh, will tackle some educational or, or financial topic uh, and then tie that back into the resources that are available uh, with A Plus Investor. Uh, so we do have a, a tremendous amount uh, of user resource content uh, and onboarding content, um, but uh, they are not in uh, PDF forms, but uh, I believe that they should be all set up to at least make them friendly uh, if you want to print them out from a web page. <clears throat> Great, and then we've actually got some, some comments and questions regarding my portfolio, um, if you have a few more mm -hmm. minutes. Um, sure. One question, and this is maybe tied to my portfolio, but other parts too. Um, 
if someone wants to look, Nancy wants to know if she's looking at sectors, how can she tell which stocks are in each sector? Um, I believe there's a tab that it displays that, but we shall find this out together. Maybe. Uh, so when you're at my portfolio and you load a given portfolio, there is a fundamentals tab uh, that has sec stock industry or fund category. So you're able to find that if you want to look at the overall designations within a given portfolio, then you also have, ah, I haven't entered in shares. But the diversification analyzer, assuming you've set up a portfolio with a number of shares, uh, you can actually then see what the sector and sector breakdown is for the stock holdings uh, in a given portfolio as well. Okay. And uh, John was asking if it's possible to see all his portfolios in aggregate versus having a portfolio by portfolio. Uh, that was actually that one of the one of the enhancements or, or one of the pro future projects that we're considering is having the users either you know select analyze all portfolios uh, or be able to basically pick and choose the individual portfolios that they want to include for analysis. So at this point in time, you're only able to analyze whatever the blue star or your favorited uh, portfolio, but that is uh, based on user feedback. That is a, a uh, enhancement that uh, we probably will be uh, tackling uh, in the coming quarter. <clears throat> and I also know this is on your list. Um, yeah, I did. we did have a request to actually import stocks. Uh, the gentleman said he had about 50 or 60 stocks. Um, and I do believe that's actually on the uh, upgrade list for my portfolios to actually have that feature in the future as well. Yes, uh, the, the first step is to uh, to understand uh, the uh, sort of the behind the scenes technological uh, lift required for that, being able to uh, properly f uh, process. There's a couple of different financial data standards, uh, OFX uh, and uh, one other one, um, and you know making sure that uh, we have a, a infrastructure in place that can pr uh, correctly analyze and process and to populate that data into a portfolio. So uh, I, not being a programmer, I don't know how heavy of a lift it is, So, but I certainly don't want to say it's going to be easy peasy and then uh, have my tech team, uh, you know, start sabotaging my computer because I've, I've over promised. Uh, so, but yes, that is definitely an enhancement that we're going to be investigating uh, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. And you see that question of the blue star, I just want to point out that the blue star is the portfolio you're actually favoriting. Um, it'll be the portfolio that will always show up first uh, when you click on my portfolio. So we did have that question. Um, a question I know you get occasionally is what happens if there's a stock that someone wants to track that's not in our universe of 6,000 stocks? Uh, yes, and that goes back to, I think it was a question from uh, maybe John, I, a John earlier as far as the companies that end up in the 6,100 stock universe. Um, so yes, um, you know we recognize the fact that there uh, we do get questions from people uh, who are trying to enter in stocks that aren't in the database, uh, and that is actually a, a bigger, longer-term uh, project that uh, also would like to tackle at some point in time. But ultimately, you know, we get people uh, in closed-end funds. Uh, our universe doesn't track closed-end funds uh, when it comes to stocks. Um, if it's a Canadian company um, that is not an ADR, then it will not be in our database. Uh, those are the big ones is we get a lot of people, uh, you know, Canadian cannabis companies, Canadian mining companies uh, that they're not enter, able to enter into the portfolio because they're not uh, supported uh, by our active universe of companies uh, and understand totally the frustration uh, surrounding that and um, you know, trying to map out how we can better 
uh, expand uh, our overall ticker universe for both stocks uh, as well as funds. Uh, so that is something we definitely want to, we'll be looking into uh, again in the uh, the coming weeks and, and quarters. Okay. And if I can get uh, two other questions by you and one, just a quick comment to the uh the audience, um, I'm seeing a couple of people uh, asking, uh, making notes about bond funds and their handling in my portfolio. I just want to let you all know I'm, I'm seeing those those comments. Uh, we'll look into it um, after the webinar, and I'll, I'll inform Wayne offline too about uh, what you're pointing out. Um, but one of the questions actually was, and it's a good question because it speaks to the relative nature of our grades. Um, this came from James, and his question is. Um, what if all stocks had negative growth? Would some stocks still have a score for growth? So say we're in a recession and sales and earnings are falling for many companies. Uh, absolutely. These are all relative grades, and that's a very good question. Um, let's go back. Let's see here. Let's go. So we'll go back to, so we have the, here we have the quality grade um, for Apple. Uh, so we're looking at return on assets. It has uh, a percentile ranking of 96, and that stems from the relative nature of 17.6% ROA for Apple uh, against the entire universe of companies. Um, you know, we actually have um, a momentum grade. This is probably one that is more directly tied to it. Um, so we are calculating a relative strength weighted for quarter measure uh, for each company. So Apple has a 10% uh, weighted relative price strength uh, over the last four quarters. That ranks in the 78th percentile. But let's say the market absolutely goes, um, goes down, uh, and for, especially for a long period of time, and you know all companies have uh, you know a negative uh, price change over the last three, six, nine, and, and twelve months, heaven forbid. So you know when you're looking at all of these companies relative because they're using a percentile rank. So a company could have a percentile rank that is very strong, but when you look at the raw score, it could be very bad depending on where we are, A, the variable that's being used, and then what, how the overall market or the economy could be impacting that individual variable. So yes, uh, you know, absolutely you could have a company that grades out as an A, uh, so it's very strong relative to uh, all of the stocks in the stock universe, but depending on the variable you're looking at, it could be very poor on an, on an individual company basis. Great. And finally, um, George wrote in that he said it's an excellent improvement to A plus, um, and just wants to know with the uh, with the great the grade screener, can he export the results to Excel? Uh, that is actually uh, also near the top of uh, my personal wish list uh, going forward. Uh, at this point in time, that you don't we don't have an export function, and I must admit that's a, a glaring omission uh, on my part. Uh, as we were putting the finishing touches on this product. So I take full responsibility for that. Uh, but George, absolutely, that is some uh, functionality. And actually, I was going to be reaching out to my tech team uh, probably either later today or first thing tomorrow morning to get an idea of how easily it would be to to add that uh, export button. So again, listening, noted, and hopefully implemented uh, much sooner rather than later. That's great. And thank I'll you just... for your comments, George. <laughs> And one last question, I'll just throw this in real quick and I'll answer it. Uh, Ken asked about um, how, whether it's an all-encompassing uh, service for AI where we get access to all our premium products. Um, it is, it's our platinum product. It gives you access to A+, which Wayne showed you today. Uh, Stock Superstars Report, which Wayne oversees. Uh, dividend Investing, which Derek Hageman oversees and we'll be talking about next week. Uh, and VMQ, which I oversee. Uh, and I am Ryan, it was very gracious of you to uh, answer that. Yeah, um, 
yeah, so uh, if, if people are interested in um, looking for that, the service is called AAII Platinum. Uh, you can find it on our website. Um, so with that, uh, I wanted to thank uh, both Wayne and Charles for their time tonight. And I want to thank all of you for uh, attending tonight's webinar. A uh, replay of the presentation will be available tomorrow on our YouTube channel, along with links to uh, tonight's handout and to some of the resources discussed. Um, and that will all be sent to your email address since you registered. Uh, we do have some upcoming webinars to highlight, uh, which you can sign up for uh, as at the uh, URL you see there, www.aaii.com slash webinars. Uh, next week, uh, Derek Hageman is going to be talking about the secrets behind AAII's new dividend grader. It's, uh, you'll want to tune in if you are uh, interested in uh, dividends. Uh, that's now November 11th, 7.30 uh, Central. And uh, the following week, uh, we'll be rebroadcasting uh, the original uh, webinar about A-plus investor, uh, Idea Discovery Made Simple. This is intended uh, as an introduction to the service uh, for folks who um, didn't necessarily uh, get enough information about it tonight or the, the new features. Um, so yeah, uh, we also have some more webinars uh, coming up in November, or excuse me, in December. And uh, we'd like you to stay tuned. Uh, you can follow uh, all of our stuff at www.aaii.com slash webinars. And with that, we wanted to wish you all good health and good wealth. Good night, everybody.